space is advancing at such a crazy speed right now. There was a uh, an article by Michael Sheets, who's a reporter for CNBC. Uh, he tweets at the Sheets tweets. If you want to follow him, he's really great. There's an article from July 27th that's talking about the space economy and how it's grown at its fastest rate in years to $469 billion in 2021 and basically goes over how much momentum the space program really has right now. And, you know, we've talked about this before. For for whatever reason, there seems to be this uh, amazing space progress that also simultaneously happens while there are around the world in in economies and and wars. There's all this crazy stuff going on, this space conundrum. Um, but I don't overthink that. I just know that. The last time that happened, there were some pretty spectacular things that changed the way that all of us looked at things. You think, talk to anybody who watched the moon landing the first time, Apollo 11, on that black and white screen TV. On everyone huddled around the radio, huddled around the TV, and watch how their eyes light up. I think we are at the precipice of another thing like that. And while history will certainly play out and we will find out what will happen here in the future, the cards are being played right now as far as who's going to launch first. It seems like right now NASA's SLS is in the lead. And of course, I really hope that my week in Florida is spent uh, in success getting to watch this launch. But, you know, if the launch window uh, closes and we're not able to send it out there. It's going to be uh, interesting to see what happens with NASA's SpaceX. Uh, sorry, SpaceX's Starship. Because uh, the other thing too is for the first woman and the first person of color step foot on the moon, it requires the human landing system. The human landing system contract was given to SpaceX for their Starship. So what's going to happen is NASA's SLS is going to launch the Orion capsule. The Orion capsule will then meet up with Starship, and then those will travel together to the moon, and then Starship will undock from Orion and land on the moon, and then come back up, attach with Orion like Apollo, come back home, and then land back on Earth. So that's the that is what's happening. So when we talk about the race and who's going to win first, ultimately they both need to succeed for this to happen because without the human landing system, Orion is just a capsule. Orion doesn't have the ability to land on the moon. So this really is like the early Mercury Gemini days where we're watching the development of what will eventually become the Apollo program and there's a lot to be excited about, including Polaris Dawn, which is the privately funded SpaceX uh, Jared Isaacman missions where they're going to prove out basically all the technology that SpaceX is developing like NASA did back in the Apollo era, um, or I should say Mercury Gemini days, for the eventual mission of in this case, with SpaceX being multiplanetary, landing on the moon, going to Mars. Jared Isaacman and SpaceX are helping fund a lot of that research. And of course, Jared being the person that he is, is putting together a team to do that. And he's able to kind of spearhead this mission as a leader and work with the brilliant people over at SpaceX to make that happen. So all of these things, while there's a lot of, you know... Uh, people getting into arguments over who's going to land first, who's going to launch first. Is it SpaceX? Is it NASA? At the end of the day, they all need to succeed because they're all intertwined in the success of making life interplanetary. And I think that's kind of the lesson we have nowadays, which is that 
we all need to start working more together than fighting with each other. But that's for another podcast.